So we used this stuff before. Anybody remember what it is called? Japanese knotweed. And do you remember what we used it for? We make candle molds with it because inside is nice and hollow. So today I'm gonna harvest a little bit of this, okay? And uh, which I already did. We're gonna take it back into camp and make a really cool bushcraft project out of it. I'm excited, let's get after it. Okay, so I found a little spot in which I'm going to work and now the cat's out of the bag. What we're going to be making is a bushcraft clothes hanger. <laughs> so I love little projects like this. I think they're super fun because you're out and about, you're looking for different items anyway while you're out there, you get back to camp and it's, it's something creative to do. So um, again, we're gonna start with that Japanese knotweed. Now what you're also going to need to find is just a straight stick that will fit down the inside of this knotweed. The reason for that is because after each segment of knotweed, there is a, like what I call a spacer, I'm sure there's a technical name for it, but it separates this tube from this tube, okay, right in the middle. Um, so we're gonna have to break that. So you're gonna get a stick, sharpen the edge off, and then, um, get inside there and clean that out. Now just be careful so you don't split that out um, any further than you actually need to. Um, what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna come up to one of these nodules here and I'm going to just cut all the way around. Um, this is gonna be the main portion of our clothing hanger. So if you think about a hanger, um, you know, you have your hook up here and it comes down. This is where your coat or whatever hangs on. That's what this section is going to be. So I'm going to come in here now. I'm going to cut the rest of this away. Quick and easy, right? So two ends are opened up now. Now I can take my sharp stick and I can just take it down inside and just get it through there. So just take your time with that. You can see it doesn't take much. Okay, I'm gonna just work that back and forth a little bit just to free that up. Okay, now that that's done, what I'm gonna have to do is I need to get a piece of wood and put two holes in it. For my case, I am going to use my gimlet on a larger dry piece of wood. The reason I'm using a larger piece of wood like this is because I'm gonna carve it down to what I need. If you use a small stick and a larger gimlet like this, majority of the time the grain is working against you so it's gonna split out. So if you go with something bigger and drier like this, you can really easily put the holes in and then as you see, I'm gonna carve this down into the piece that I need. Okay, so the first step, I took the piece with the two holes and I fished through a piece of paracord. So I have my paracord looped through just like that. Now I'm gonna take the longer side of this and I'm gonna run it through my entire piece of Japanese knotweed. Now, it could be a little tricky depending on how much you open up this um, divider here. So a really nice, easy option is to take a thinner line, like my bank line, and I just ran that through. I don't need to cut it off the spool or anything. I just run that through. And then what I can do is I can go ahead and I can tie my bank line off to my paracord, okay? And then I could pull my bank line through and that'll fish my paracord through. Always thinking ahead, right? We learned this in other videos. That's why you guys are so smart. All right, so I have my paracord tied off with my bank line and then I'm gonna just make sure it's going in nice and even. Little tug right through on the other side, okay? All right, so now we have somewhat of a contraption that looks like this, okay? So I have my toggle on here. I have my entire piece of knotweed on here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two ends and I'm gonna just use a very simple bracelet knot. That's where you do like an overhand knot and an overhand knot and they just bite against each other. You can literally use anything for this. You gotta just eyeball it to see um, size wise where you want this to fall into place. Um, but it's, it's pretty simple. So simple bracelet knot, okay? Okay, so the bracelet knot is done. I'm actually going to tuck that inside here just like that, just to make it look a little bit cleaner and neater. Okay, now um, what I can do is uh, make my hanger, right? So I can go ahead, I can hang this on whatever I would like, um, this portion here, and I have myself a hanger. So if you wear a suit coat or a tuxedo like I do often out into the woods, you don't have to worry about getting your coat dirty, okay? Um, so you can hang it on here. And I actually brought a raincoat along with me just to show you how nice this thing works out. All right, 
This is it. Do or die for the coat hanger. Oh, what do you know? Works perfectly. Check this out, right? Nice, easy, I could adjust that down. Works out great. So with a little bit of ingenuity, a few pieces of um, items from nature, and a couple tools, you can really quickly have yourself a good time out here and uh, make a fun little project. So um, yeah, that's our bushcraft coat hanger. I know I made these in the past and I know somebody's gonna say, I would just hang my coat on a tree. And you can do that, but this is fun. And this is one of those things that I had a good time sitting next to the stream this afternoon making and uh, using my tools and just getting outside because it is a glorious warm day here in Pennsylvania. So uh, I think the weather's finally breaking and I have somewhere to now hang my uh, swimsuit when I'm done in the pond swimming. So I hope you all enjoyed that video. Um, again, fun, something different, something exciting, bushcraft style, right? So uh, check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com, school merchandise, and um, our blog. And until the next video, stay in the woods. Also hit that subscribe button.